All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move now into a little a little round table discussion where we're just gonna kind of hit on a couple important uh, redraft topics and how we're feeling. So the first the first uh, topic we're gonna go into is the the fragility of volume dependent running backs. So what we mean by that is guys who maybe aren't the most skilled players, had the best player profiles or the best draft capital, but they're sitting in a situation where you expect them to get the ball handed to them a lot. Right. So how do we address these running backs and um, how much confidence do you have in them? You know, guys, we're going to talk about this is Miles Gaskin, Daryl Henderson, Mike Davis, Gus Edwards. Uh, so first, Tony, how do we feel about a guy like like Miles Gaskin? What are some thoughts you have just on the this group in general? Uh, yeah. So Gaskin is honestly of this group, probably one of the guys that I'm least worried about. And I, I can still remember after the first preseason game, everyone was freaking out about Miles Gaskin because Malcolm Brown was getting more carries and he was like the first running back used on the first drive. I was like, all right, everybody relax because Brian Flores knows what he's doing. I'm very confident in him. He just wanted to see Malcolm Brown in their new offense with he, with a new player. It was the first time he'd been on the field with those guys. Um, I, I really do think that uh, – I think it's – I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Salvin Ahmed, uh, the, yeah. the one of the backups for Miami, I think he's more of a threat than Malcolm Brown is, because I think they trust uh, Miles Gaskin at the at the goal line. So I'm I don't think Malcolm Brown will really cut in to the uh, goal line work. I could see him cutting in to Gaskin's work more, like on short yardage, you know, more towards the middle of the field than goal line, just based off the some of the preseason work we saw from Malcolm Brown. I feel like they kind of lost some confidence, but um, I'm really confident in Gaskin this year. Um, and we just saw, I think it was a report yesterday or this morning that he's the floor said he's ready to make him a workhorse basically. And I might be using the wrong terminology, but they said they're ready for him to be on the field all the time. Yeah. So with Gaskin, I'm not too worried. Yeah. With Gaskin, they really, they said that he's capable of playing three downs. Now, might say we get from that to look through the coach because he might be capable of playing the three downs, but are they necessarily always going to use him like that? Uh, Gaskin last year did have a little bit of that wear down. Like, he got used a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So there is maybe top-end volume concerns with Gaskin, but really I think they're going to try to use him as much as they can. Um, Malcolm Brown, I would agree, maybe some short yardage, but where – he concerns is maybe he'll come in when they want to give Gaskin some breathers. Because what Malcolm Brown is best at is just pass blocking. Like, the guy yeah. gets in there and he's a little bit of a wall. Um, you know, if there was any bit of a split into uh, Gaskin share, it would be more of like the Ahmed because he's got more of that, like, home run speed yeah. punch little ability, maybe. Um, you know, my take when it comes to these running backs at whole is they're typically guys I don't like having on – my roster in my team at all because where you take them in the drafts it's the famous coin like rb dead zone area it's once you're past these the guys who are more, either have the talent or the the backfield secured that's when these guys go in your drafts and it's it's high draft you're taking them rounds four through six um and i just want to remind people that the fragility is is just so high right we already saw it with a guy like mike davis who you know, he dodged every single bullet seemingly until he's the last guy. And then you see they sign a guy like a Wayne Gallman, who is just very similar to Mike Davis. Like, even if it's 60-40, it takes away with a lot of what you thought you are going to get from Mike Davis. And he's not a special talent at the end of the day. So, you know, a lot of times I feel like when people reach for plays like this in their drafts, you're just not setting yourself up well. And if you know managers in your league who maybe aren't as sharp as you and a guy like Mike Davis comes out and has a good week one, you know, while maybe they're not easing ways Gallman in yet, he might be a guy I'm looking to trade away for a stud receiver. Any of these these backs, if you can afford to move on and pick up a wide receiver who's, you know, a lock for your flex, um, I'm going to look to do it. Um, you know, Gus, Gus Edwards... For, for Travion Williams, it's just interesting to me because, especially now with Justice Hill going down, I think he might be a guy, if there's anyone in this backfield who's going to surprise in their week-to-week -week value, I, I think he could maybe play more into what we got some weeks down the stretch from J.K. Dobbins. I don't know if Gus Edwards' role really does change all too much. Um, 
but that's just me. And, you know, I'm worried with a guy, like Gus Edwards, with how high he's going in your drafts because what if he does keep his same role and Williams steps up? Or if they do bring in Devonta Freeman, who I think would serve maybe a little more uh, of a role than Le'Veon Bell could give them. And uh, you see like a guy like Henderson. You drafted him super early. They traded to bring in a guy like Sony Michelle. I don't know if early he gets right off the gate, but he could kind of be that, that girly role we saw in Atlanta last year where he could just be coming out and scoring touchdowns. And that takes away from where you're drafting, where you were drafting Daryl Henderson. So I just want to remind people that the confidence with this group of running backs should not be that high. If you can get someone in your league to trade at some point when it seems like maybe their role is more secure than it is, that's important. And just, you know, be keep an eye on who's out there and who teams are maybe looking to sign, who they're looking to bring in. Because, you know, at the end of the day, these backs, you know, they are who they are for a reason. They slipped in drafts for a reason. Um, and teams want to bring in depth for a reason. So 